This podcast is recorded on the lands of the Boonarung and Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and we pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Beware, traveller. You enter this den of horror at your own risk. Beyond these mists lie the lands of Barovia, the domain of the vampire, Strad von Zarevich. If you dare to go further, death is not a certainty, but you are certain to suffer. The mist swirls around you, consuming your field of vision as you move forward and into the valley of Barovia. The castle Ravenloft stands astride the valley, dark and brooding as it watches the river flowing below. Your view sweeps forward, the small, sad village of Barovia cowering in the shadow of the castle and disappearing below you. You swing past the gothic spires of the fortress tower and down to the winding road that heads deeper into the valley. The road wends its way deeper, whistling past a lonely windmill on a sheer hill. The wind picks up and stirs the leaves around the base of the windmill, up and up and into a pattern in the air. A pattern that spells out DPR, Curse of Strad. Nice one, Grego. Using the leaves, not ash this time. Uh, nah, I still love it, up. but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not as much roiling today, was there? No, no, no eddies. No eddying. That's the oh, one. Oh, oh, roiling. roiling. There you go. Roiling. That's I'm going to write that down. That's a free <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quivering. Member. Write it down. Quivering. Write it down. Quivering member. Yeah. Got it. Got to put it Roiling, quiver, quivering member. Uh, <laughs> oh, what? Are we making suggestions for your future of intros? Patreon? No. Yeah. <laughs> that it's yeah. supposed I thought to you be were freaky. spitballing future children's names. <laughs> roiling, quivering member. Oh, Everybody Esquire. meet my daughter, roiling, quivering member. Hello. <laughs> She's very oh. confident. Oh. <laughs> I, you would be too if your name was roiling, quivering member. Only two oh. ways it can go: <laughs> <laughs> roiling or quivering. <laughs> too much. Hey, welcome to uh, DPR does Curse of Strad. This is the game where we are in the horror setting, where we try and battle the vampire Strad von Zarevich. But you knew that already because this is episode eleven. Yes, I got it right. Fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, I play Giacomo Cloghart, the owner, operator, and manager of Clockhart's Pies. He's an octogenarian. Uh, he's a half-elf, and he wears decorative Captain Clockhart attire, including shoulder pauldrons with little tassels on them. Uh, oh, and my name is Emil Freund as well. So thanks for joining us and welcome. He's 80. Oh, yeah. He's an old wow. half-elf. Yeah, he's a, yeah. Bit, he's a bit... He is quivering. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> trembling. <laughs> Royally? Liver spots. Not quite, Roy- not yet, but uh, who knows, maybe before the campaign is out. Roiling in the deep. I didn't realise he was that old. Uh, did half elves age the same? I don't know. Look it up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we can cover it in that in Jack and Lauren's you uh, knew. D&D for Dummies section. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, what's the life expectancy of your average half elf? <laughs> we well, do take depends, questions. <laughs> do we answer them? <laughs> 
<laughs> Your answer's as good as mine because I have no idea. It's just the frantic just... flipping of pages and tapping yeah. of keyboards. Well, yeah. swiping along iPads because we've got all the books in digital fashion, which is yeah. so handy. I love uh, it. yeah. They fantastic. live much longer than humans, often exceeding 180 years, which Bingo! I just looked up on the digital version. Thank, Thank you. Craig. <laughs> All right, so he's okay. he, he all right. He's eighty, but he looks a solid one hundred and forty. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's all those pies clogging up his heart. Uh, it's the makeup. It's part of the appeal. People think he's more harmless mm. if he's older age. Mm. True. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. More wise. Yeah, that's it. You'd trust a man who who's baked pies for one hundred and forty years, wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't you? I'm, I'm actually asking. Would you? I mean, no, I, this is a no, focus group. I'm trying to get not. the messaging for the next Clog Hearts campaign. Wait, and the man's been so doing far. it for 140 years? Yeah, Clog Hearts. His, the pies have individually baked for 140 years. Well, both are options. We have. Okay. Yeah, we've got them both on the table. Trying to. One I trust, the other one I don't. Hi, I'm Jack, and I'm playing Curly, the crab person monk. Currently, he is feeling the worst for wear. Um, because of some weird mumbo jumbo magic stuff, probably bad dreams, right? Mm. Yes, mm, it is dreams. the bad dreams that do me so bad at night. Oh, I went a bit Italian there. <clears throat> <laughs> um, yeah. My name's Lauren Barker, and I play Apermia Phosphine, otherwise known as Mo. She's a rogue assassin. She's doing quite well, actually. She's uh, pretty healthy. She's been healed a bunch and uh, seems to be quite fortuitous. Uh, she's also seen Strahd twice now, um, and she is kind of dressed in a bunch of sort of piratey kind of stuff, and she's got a very special hat which is like a bowler hat with a steampunk style with a couple of cat ears on it because she's quite jaunty. That's who I play on this uh, Dungeons and Dragons podcast. So you've seen Strahd twice. I have, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you're still doing very well. Yes. Weird. Interesting. Two totally unrelated oh. facts. Weird okay. that they would go together like but that. Weird. Uh, mm, I'm, just, I know, I'm just lucky, I guess. Am I lucky? Am I special? Yeah, am I sure. chosen? I think all rogues have a bit of luck. Why else? You know, that's that's part of the part of the shtick, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, you wouldn't go into Just... roguery if you didn't, you know, want to trust your gut a bit and go with your impulse and rely on make a bit some of chance. shady deals. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, my my luck is roiling. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, mine's trembling. So good. <laughs> <laughs> good times. My name is Ben. I play Ragyog, the goblin cleric of Lathander, one of many, 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 many clerics that Lathander has, and Ragyog is not happy to be one of them, but enjoying the power that comes along with it. So things aren't so bad, you know. Uh, indeterminate age, hard to tell, um, missing the sunlight in this dreary and drab land of eddying mists and roiling members. And um, the royal and, member, and actually starting <laughs> to maybe be a little bit worried about uh, their companions uh, not sleeping so well and starting to look like shit. Uh, it means that Ragog might actually have to step up with some clericking. Can I ask a question about Lathander? You sure can. I hope I know the answer. What kind of god is Lathander? I know it's a morning lord, morning lord, but I just want a little bit more information. Uh, and also, why is why is uh, why is your character why is uh, uh, Ragyog not into being a cleric of of uh, Lathander. Uh, well, so uh, Lathander is a god of rebirth and hope and rejuvenation, um, and hence all about sunlight and. But Ragyog has hay stuff. fever. <laughs> <laughs> Ragyog um, didn't. He does come... sound like he has. He allergies. does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally all year round. <laughs> it's got a stuffy um, nose. <laughs> the only reason they started following Lathander because it said they. Um, he had good good medication. Mm. Haven't seen it so far. <laughs> and it's on his list: antihistamines, healing. <laughs> it's a level nine spell, so I've just got to get to it. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, um, Scientology. It, it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> um, it's an inverted cone. In terms of why. Ragyog's not happy about it. Um, I guess in in the too long didn't read because um, it wasn't his calling to become a cleric. He was more forced into it when he lost the ghost tours. 
um, and his whole livelihood because clerics of Lathander came and turned all of the undead. Um, and and Ragyog somehow ended up in his employ. But he's still trying to hustle his um, undead tour, ghost tour kind of uh, business, isn't he? Deep down, would very much like to. Right but, um, yeah, it's a very rich and detailed backstory. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we need to know. <laughs> yeah. It may not matter by the end of the next couple of eps. I don't owe you anything. <laughs> well, I'm trying to build up a bit of character story for each of us so that when one of us inevitably dies during this game, it hurts that lot more for the audience. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, Emil. Yes, we, ha- we haven't done that in it. 10 eps. Well. And I'm Dan. I've <laughs> died already once. Um, I am playing my second character, Hans von Suchensuch, the half-brother of Bertrand von Suchensuch. Uh, he's a half-orc, uh, leather daddy, loves his leather buckles and belts and big hats and, uh, leather capes, uh, big, uh, like, knee-high leather boots with all the laces, loves it. Um, and, uh, currently, uh, also feeling the effects of these uh, bad dreams and uh, starting to wig out a little bit and starting to, you know, just see shit and um, currently uh, feeding a little squirrel that uh, no one else can see just from uh, the little bits of lint in his pockets, but uh, he thinks that it's uh, little breadcrumbs. And he, yeah. Jesus. Hans took a fucking turn for the worse, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, did he, he almost died as well. Just, you know, he got blown up by that um, Mordenkainen's Morden, Morden Book. bookie wookie. Um, <laughs> so, God, you know, we're funny. He's, okay, he's, sorry, continue. I know, <laughs> high level. Um, I haven't even so started yeah, the like, game yet, my God. Oh, God. He's, he's having a Classic. hard time. Okay, and uh, my name's Greg Pickering. I'm the Dungeon Master for Curse of Strahd and I will be setting this horrific scene and just generally dragging the tone down. Um, so <laughs> let's uh, – what happened last episode, do we remember? That is a good um, question. It, is a good it, question. it was very bleak. There was a child that was taken to a windmill. Yeah. That- there was Discord sewn amongst the party and not the kind of Discord you can get access to if you join us on Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was the best one! Yeah, you got, you got that you got it written down somewhere. You're like, I know what I'm gonna do this way. Uh, I, I just hear, I just hear key words in my head, and I just go off and mm. here's, here's that advert. Good. <laughs> no, we are we are united. We've just been through a bunch of shit, and mm. we were going back off to keep taking Irina where she needed to go. And yeah. we passed a cart that had a child on it that was also significant. Oh, the there was a doll. The, mm-hmm. the same, the, yes, the had same, the same doll. doll that the yes. curly has. The curly has that was given to him by the old lady, the pie lady, back in the first village. We were when, at. when you all ate people, yeah. No, 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 it wasn't the pie no, lady. Not the it pie was lady. The oh, it wasn't lady. the pie lady. The crying lady. Oh, the crying the one. Yeah. You remember? You remember that cry? I yeah. wish I had it in the sound effects reel. <laughs> but um, then DPR, the... now with more than eight sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the pie lady that do, was at the windmill, right? <laughs> yeah, the pie lady was at the windmill. Uh, and that's there was a front. crow that, like, yeah, gave us crow. a warning not to go to the yeah. mill. But yes. we saw like some kind of like I don't know, child selling <gasps> ring or something. A child's hand fell yeah. into through the crack. It's like a there was like a cage up at uh, up on mm. the side of the windmill. Um, up so there's like a little balcony at the top. Um, yeah. uh, near the the domed roof, and there's some uh, wooden cages up there. And Hans saw a child's hand reach out. I say, Ragyog, you didn't set this up, did you, old boy? This looks like one of yours. But our churches, no, they're much more welcoming than, than, than this one. And why did we listen to that crow to not come in here? Uh, this is this is the lovely, lonely mill from the, the lady's card reading. It's got That's to right. be. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I will. heard lovely. This doesn't feel lovely at all. But it feels it's like, like a haunted children. house. Children yeah. in cages. You I don't feel see like the children. Look, it's a joke from last episode that you made, Clogheart, you forgetful 
old 140 year old looking half elf cop that for a sick oh, no. bird ragdog <laughs> walks off and spits on the ground and eats a bug oh he knows how to cut to the quick that one doesn't he <laughs> oh ragdog here look at my squirrel and um you what hans goes uh chasing after ragdog look at my squirrel it's so cool what is a squirrel it's i didn't so see a damn cool. squirrel them things that what that old crone told us about. Isn't there something supposed to, isn't there treasure in that there mill thing? Yes, I do I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit for treasure if you don't, if you, if you get what I mean. I mean, it's the whole rogue, roguing business trade treasure. Can we go where the sparkly things are, please? I look. And I, maybe also to make sure those, the, that little girl's okay. I mean, the, I got a very ominous feeling from that cart going down there. Should, should we go and? We should check it out. Allow me to use my photographic memory to recall the prophecy. Oh, that'd be great. Of power and strength. A weapon of vengeance of sword and sunlight. The charlatan. A lovely mill on a precipice. The treasure lies within. It's lonely. Oh, well, it sounds like there is treasure inside this uh, mill. So I think maybe we should go in, even no. though the crow said we should not. I don't think so. The crow said we shouldn't go in. It looks super dangerous. I was burnt. I'm not feeling so flash. I think we should just stay where we are. Everybody. So many conflicting ideas. Everybody knows crows are liars. Wait, what's, what's wrong with you, hearts? You, I mean, you do what's look wrong like. with you? You do look Little like man. shit. No offense. So do you, Curly. <laughs> and you, Jacobo. You look shit. Look at you. Yes, but I always look like shit. I look like shit before Blow I came into nose. these bands. Jesus, you've had that shit hanging from your nose for the last half an hour. Just blow I mean, it for already. You could have. You could have told me. I, I thought that was part of your face. Sorry. The um the the sun is high in the sky, but it's still shrouded in cloud, and um the light is dimmed, but it it's. It's nearing midday and the wind stirs around you and the, the, uh, the broken windmill uh, creaks a little as it begins to turn. Um, and you're quite a way away from the mill uh, where you are. It, um, you're on, you're, you're on a, a level uh, height-wise with the mill, but the road ahead of you sort of dips down, uh, goes downhill and then curves around the bottom of the... Um, the hill that the, the mill sits on top of. Uh, and it's you can see even uh, in this middle of the day, uh, the light is dim enough that you can see the glow of that oven um, coming from around the door of the mill. And when you look at it, it feels almost as if you can feel the heat um, all this way away. Bugger this, I need a shit and a probiotic. I'm going in. <laughs> he opens the door. Wait, wait, before we get to it, I think I'd like and to... And he opens the door. Maybe. Uh, bye, Giacomo. So Giacomo just strides off down the hill because you, you're, you're a ways away from the off mill from the at mill? the moment. Well, he yeah, says, yeah, he says so... that and he makes his way directly to the <laughs> he mill. He just, just keeps Water. saying, open the door. <laughs> open that <laughs> as he walks down the hill. Hans but yeah, strides to, off. to uh, grapple uh, Giacomo and is, is emphatically saying, no, don't go in there. Don't go in there. I won't I be manhandled. And he uh, makes a grapple check. I've, uh, I've rolled a, let me see, uh, that's a 10 for, for old Giacomo. Yeah, that's a 19 on my die. I won't be manhandled, <laughs> damn it. Don't you know I know kung fu, for God's sake. No, the crow said, you must listen to the crow. You can't listen to, you can't go in there. I put crows in pies, damn it. But of course, Giacomo was wrong. He would be manhandled. <laughs> <laughs> and he was. That's great. So Hans manhandles you to the, the ground yep. um, beside the road. Um, and as you two are uh, wrestling in the mud on the side of the um, road, like just slapping at each other and like rolling on top of each other, the cart. Um, with the two villagers from the village of Barovia comes back up the hill, pulled by a, a skinny nag and all bones and and um, fur. And as it um, rolls up, the horse seems to be heading 
its own way. It's it's making its own way because the the two the couple um, sit on the bench, uh, their heads lolling from side to side, their eyes rolled back in their heads um, as their eyes flutter, uh, and they seem to be undergoing some sort of uh, vision or trance um, and clutched between them is the bag uh, that was given to them. Help! This man has no right to lay his arms on me and restrain Shut me! Shut up, you stupid man! Help! Mo's going to notice that they seem to be completely otherwise occupied and she's going to try and sneak up and grab that bag oh, that they've got between yeah. them. Yeah, so... Give me a, <laughs> give me a slide of Sorry, Greg, what was that? Uh, can you give me a sleight of hand check, please? Yeah. Come on. It's an eight. Okay. <laughs> Jumping onto a moving wagon. I do. <laughs> I actually just kind of like shuffle along to the side of it. And then as I can sort of see in between the two spokes, I just duck underneath and start to cling to the underside of the carriage as it falls along. <laughs> And I sort of That's incredibly complex for an eight. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> so, eight sleight of hand as well, not even athletics. Not even. Not even. <laughs> or just, stealth. Hey, look over there! And you jump up with the wagon. Can I do a stealth? No. Uh, yeah, you can do a stealth. Um, probably better like a, an athletics uh, to get up under the wagon first. Oh, athletics get under the wagon? Yeah. Fucking three? <laughs> Amazing. Oh and so you dive under the wagon. Uh, yeah, I do. And I got my little hand out and I'm fully, I'm fully like grappling at the, at the old wood, uh, but the wood is completely rotten and starts to flake away in my fingers. All right, come on then, Woody. Hold on. This is what, you, this is what you've worked your whole life for, mate. Come on. And it just sort of falls away from her fingers and her toes. She can't get a grip anywhere. Just sort of and the, the wagon just rolls on and you're left on your back <laughs> with your back, hands and feet in the air just like clawing. <laughs> and now my hands are completely covered in, in splinters. It was a good idea. Can someone else? Tr- I mean, what's in that bag? What, what, what are those people doing? How, how big's the bag? Greg's uh, getting it is smaller a and smaller. Medium sized bag. <laughs> it's a, it is a, a keep bag, a, a reusable Hessian sack. Of I environmental suppose. make and use rather than a plastic one. One use throwaway head <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are there any exactly. graves around? Any raves? Graves. Uh, not that you can see. Oh. In the I was going to do a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what there is one. Oh, you spot one, <laughs> Curly. No. Okay. It's, it's the oh, grave it's of the ancient the lovely gone. millkeeper. <laughs> It's um, the grave of that joke. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry right. that I trampled on. Dead, <laughs> dead before it ever got a chance to really live. Yeah. It is um, six feet under. Uh, Ragyog, did you say you thought I looked bad? I mean, it's hard to tell given that uh, you're a, a crustacean, but you certainly look uh, less full of vitality over the last couple of nights than, than you have in the past. Why? How do you feel? That would be in accordance with my experience of life. Uh-huh. I do feel how you say shit. Plus, you keep falling over. Shut up! <laughs> As I keep on banging you into the ground. <laughs> well, look, crab man, uh, uh, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna need those, cl- we're gonna need those claws of yours, my friend, if we're going to um, confront whatever's in that lovely. Lonely Mill, and uh, look, I can protect you somewhat. Uh, what What do you say? I think we should go. That sounds quite good. Uh, I think uh, I think I will need it. All right, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith um, when we're closer to the door, because it only okay. lasts for ten minutes. Okay, come um, on, you two, get up. There's shit to be done. If if you don't let me up, I will have your balls for burgers. And I make an intimidation check. And I roll a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we stuck. <laughs> yeah, see, not, not. I knee you in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ragyog. 
can you uh, so you're taking a fair interest in Curly's um, health at the moment um, and you cast that detect magic can you give me uh, can you give me an arc- arcane check Arcana? sure alright here we go Ooh, that is uh, <laughs> 12 um Okay, so you you know you're worried about his health and you you're thinking, but you you're just reminded of the um, the tendrils of necromantic energy that seem to reach uh, out to whoever you detected magic on, mm-hmm. um, and that it reached off into the distance and uh, it seemed to be heading the way that you're going now to d- d- to the church. Can uh, I? It's a w- the mill. Yeah, sorry, the mill. Yeah. You didn't. You couldn't see from where you were, but it was in the general direction of where you are. Uh well, then I'll cast. Ragnar will cast detect magic once again. Boarding Lord, please allow me to see any of that fancy necromantic magic or other magic. That would be very nice. Thank you, Mister Boarding Lord. Um, what's the yours humbly, Ragnar? Do you detect? That is a curious prayer. Uh, it's th- within thirty feet, Greg. Why yeah, does it okay, involve so... your pants so much? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a genuflection. Um, hot. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> um, so you genuflex your way into... Uh, you kneel your way into detecting magic. Sure. Um, Why like not? Isn't that gen- genuflexing? Isn't that deep deep lunges? Yeah, kneeling. Flecting, yeah. yeah. Those kneeling. exercise yeah. people just doing deep lunges. And- just deep lunge. <laughs> All the A deep way holy lunge, it. just the way Jesus Genu- intended it. Yeah. <laughs> Genu- genuflexing is actually a hip thrust, though. <laughs> Genuflex, not yeah. a flect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I do all of that <laughs> with a look of resignation on my face as I do it. You show uh. us your morning lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you can see the uh, faint aura of necromantic energy around um, Hans, Giacomo and Curly, um, who I keep wanting to call Krabby, but <laughs> Curly. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, that tether of necromantic energy reaches off uh, and it, it does uh, head off towards the mill. Well, you three, have you two stopped fighting yet? Uh, Get up. Uh, 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 yes. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Rakyog walks over and and puts his a hand on each of your heads and pushes you both away from each other. Just settle down. There's something going on with the three of you where there's necromantic I grapple energy. Y- Ragyog. Oh, for, oh god. I help. <laughs> Natural <laughs> one. <laughs> Twenty. Oh, amazing. Ragyog. Yeah. Uh, you do actually just, know kung fu. I twist yeah. your ears and go. Listen here, you little. Shithead. Oh, 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 You're all ow. feeling a bit unwell, right? You're all feeling a little less than healthy. Uh, there's something going on, some necromantic energy that's taking over the three of you, and it's going towards that mill. Now, if you want to take care of it, we should go and fix it and find out what's going on and get the treasure. It's win, win, win for everybody. It's what I was trying to say, damn it. Yes, exactly. Uh, yep. So I'm ready. Listen Let to me, me go. Such and such. Oh, oh, wait, so you say that there's necromatic energy coming from me to the mill? Yes. I'm going to roll a intelligence check, Arcana. Arcana, because yeah, yeah. I get advantage. <laughs> Uh, your intelligence arcana check measures your ability to recall lore about spells, magic items, eldritch symbols, magical traditions, the planes of existence, and the inhabitants of those planes. Oh, good. Uh, yes, to, to recall, please roll with advantage. Sorry, to recall information. information about fey, fiends, or undead. So, please roll with advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Someone it's get better than thing. what Ragyog got. Uh, so it was a six on one die, but a 19 plus five Ooh. is 24 to find um, out what this spell is. Yep. Yeah. Great. Uh, to you, it sounds like uh, the uh, effect that you um, you get from uh, the touch of a night hag. 
Oh. Is cool. What's Touch this look? Stars. What's the look that's gone across your face there? Huds, you look like someone's walked across it, the, it your makes grave. Me, I, I think I think it has to do with uh, a hag of some description. A night hag. It's, they're been um, touched by They're it. different from normal hags in that they are, you know, with that uh, that knowledge that your character has that <laughs> I, of course, thing. knew about all the time, <laughs> um, having read up on your character. Um, it, it's uh, they're, they're different from other hags in that they're fiends. Um, oh. And they have the ability uh, to haunt a victims, uh, where they um, twist the dreams of their victims through touch, and it uh, eventually drives them mad until um, they finally uh, commit an evil act and, and die, and then their soul is taken by the night hag. And then their soul is taken by the night hag. What, Hans? How did you know all that? That is incredible. What a wealth of knowledge. I know. Behind with a dagger. And then he said, "Commit, uh, get them to do a, commit an evil act. He, he stops and just puts the dagger away. <laughs> ah, I see. It explains a lot. Now it's affecting me, Strappy and the Crab, you say? Well, I think so. I think so. But, so well, actually, I think so. <laughs> Just quietly. Sorry I mean, about that. <laughs> yes, okay. You, you take all the credit, Hans. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you changed your you mind. You got now. me going. You got me going, and then I just had to finish it off. But thank you for helping. No, it was no, really no. Great. You're welcome. I, I'm glad I could be of assistance. Maybe don't, say as I don't push. prod the bear that is <laughs> about to commit an evil act. <laughs> right. Well, I am very Have happy you that squirrel? you are. Here with us, she's kind of starting to sort of like show her palms to all three of them and just, you know, try and cat out and make sure that, that, that she seems harmless and kind of starts to sort of get down like on, in a crouch to make herself appear a bit smaller. I still think we should all go to the mill and see if we can fix you. Do you want our help? Clogheart's got a l- laptop open with like uh... – <laughs> Lime wire open. He's about to download a movie, and his finger drops towards the keyboard. He stops right at the right at the last moment. Shuts. He's going, oh, uh, almost again. <laughs> not Game of Thrones. You would not steal a car, would you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't steal a car. You're right. You then put the laptop down and let's God. all go to oh. the mill. The temptation is so strong. You're not a pirate. You're a paladin. For God's sake, man. You're right. In fact. Perhaps I have something that could help us all remember by the power of the pie. And he casts bless on the three affected members. Nice. Yep. They all start. Whenever we make an attack roll or saving throw. Roiling. Um, before the spell ends, the target, we roll it. Like quiver. Uh, yes. Uh, the target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack or saving throw. Nice. So there you go. Amazing. So the the light of your bless settles over the three of you as you all uh, approach. It has the, a slight um, taste of steak and kidney. Mm. <laughs> Does it have the smell of kid fried kidneys too? And onions. Ooh, lovely. Um, it, it settles over the three of you as you approach the mill. Okay. So you approach the door. I cast light. Uh, a little bit of your light would, wouldn't go astray either. Thanks, Lathander. Light bathes the group as you stand together in front of the door and uh, it, it lessens the effect of the, the, um, the reddish light that comes around the edges of the door frame. But you can, now that you're this close, you can, you can feel the heat radiating from the mill. You smell anything? Apart Rag your pie. I smell, yeah. I smell kidney. Uh, you smell, um, yeah, you smell cooking. You smell um, the unmistakable smell of cooking pastry. <laughs> uh, and as it wafts out um, that familiar scent, yeah. It, um, Can you hear smells, anything? Smells good. Smells good. Just the creak of the, the veins of the windmill above you. I recognize this smell. It is the smell of my shell. Oh. 
It smells delicious. No, that's Barovian single origin pastry. I can smell the wheat. Oui, this is the same. The very same as the one we met in the street who was trying to give us the pies. Wait, oh, oh, sorry. I thought you said it was your smell. And I was like, no, you smell like piss in the sea. That is very kind. Whereas this smells delicious. Why you would smell- you say such beautiful things to me? Yeah, you smell like a seaweed <laughs> rotted out of the carcass of a, of a seagull. I'm sorry. I must. I must insist. I do not wish to welcome this kind of forward procedure oh. <laughs> in a copulation way. I open the door. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to open the door. <laughs> yeah, my spells are wasting away here. Let's go. You reach up and um, touch the door handle, and it's it's hot to the touch, so much so that your your hand sort of um, immediately springs back. But then you, oh, you grab it and open the door and it's well oiled doesn't creak at all it opens up um and inside you can see the the round room ahead of you um and like i said uh the beef master 90,000 takes up a large uh part of one wall um so how big's the room greg So the ground floor has been converted into a makeshift kitchen, but the room is filthy. Baskets and old dishware are piled everywhere. Adding adding to this clutter is a peddler's cart, um, a chicken coop, a heavy wooden trunk, and a pretty wooden cabinet with flowers painted on its doors. Um, In addition, uh, you can see there's uh, there's chickens clucking in the coop, um, and you can hear toads croaking, and the sweet smell of the pastries comes out towards you but as you open the door it um you get this like further burnt smell so the sweet smell of the pastry and this this burnt stench sort of intertwines and burns your nostrils um and the odor comes out of um the the acrid odor comes out of an open upright barrel that sits in the center of the room um but again that the heat from that huge oven um and the door is uh is a square like three feet on each side with a huge um, handle with a wooden grip um, and on the other side uh, a crumbling staircase ascends uh, uh, and up above you hear shrieks and cackles that cause the old mill to shudder <laughs> um, oh, she sounds jolly <laughs> That one's having a good day. I do not think that the foundations here are very good because they are wobbling from the cackling of that old hag. No buttresses here. It's a shriek and shrack, all right. Ah, oh, I fucked that up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, another grave. Still haven't quite found my voice. Let's put it grave. that way. Oh, I've just stepped into my own grave. Uh. <laughs> no, they are here. Someone thought it was funny. There are no graves around here. I asked this DM. Yes, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a, the grave of the mind. <laughs> okay, so you're all still standing outside the open door. No um, graves, but plenty of gravy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to walk oh. in, um, and I'm going to go over to that weird barrel thing that's making the acrid smell, and I'm going to look into it. Wait. Okay. It smells so, like... In I go. Uh, inside the barrel is a black ichor, um, and it looks thick and goopy, uh, and it has like a, that uh, oily rainbow sort of sheen on the surface. Oh, look. It's a thick ichor. Um, and as you look into the barrel, you hear um, the shifting of the steps and uh, coming down the steps comes the, the old, ugly old lady. Uh, she's wrapped in a shawl as she shuffles down the steps. Visitors, visitors, we've got the visitors. When you say the Someone ugly old lady, you mean the... here to see me. Um, All right, mate. Is that yeah, the... the same one who sold us pies? That's right, yeah. You are right, darling? Um, And she comes down in um, some very uh, dainty purple slippers um, and wrapped in her shawl, uh, her hair uh, sporting a a fine blue rinse. 
Oh, hello. Um, it's it's a pleasure to see you again. We were such fans of the pastry you sold my companion Curly here last time that we thought we'd seek out the source of the 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 fine, fine dish you provided us with. And I'm just wondering, it sounds like you have a, a good time making them, but also who was that crying up there? If you don't mind me asking. The crying there, there's me laughing, it's my laugh, my little one, my lovely little one, what? Oh, but just let yourself in, oh, just let yourself into my house, what manners you have, she says as she walks down and she um, reaches out a, a warty hand and like gently caresses your chest. Uh, oh, oh but come right in, why don't you make yourself at home? I mean, we already did. Thank you. Um, yes, you're a rude little boy, a naughty little man, a naughty green oh, man. Oh, yeah, mate, uh, old lady, What? and that there were some people on a cart just the other outside that said that you do tours. So we thought we just we just visit in the area. We're not from around here. Uh, just 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 checking out the local uh, produce. Fair, the, the pie fair, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's no. been there from them that pie fair and that. So can yeah. we just like see the house from like top to bottom or something? As a fellow no, pie connoisseur, yeah. love to no see tours, your process. but you can buy a pastry, one gold each, and all the finest dreams that money can buy. It was a delicious pie that I ate the last time. Yep, yeah, I feel it was maybe somewhat cursed or something. Like just no, no. What? what? Trying to say yes, come to walking into my house and telling me. Yeah, you've been walking into these ones dreams, is what you've been doing. You're a rude little girl. You're a rudy. How dare you? They said that they do too. You're all right, the, mate. Knocked on the wooden frame because he hasn't entered yet. He knocks on the wooden frame of the door and says, uh, excuse me, may I come in? Oh, yes, you're quite nice, but you, you're rude. And her eye begins to bulge and it bulges like quite like grotesquely large, like crazy bulges out as she begins to shriek at you. And as she does, her form takes on like a misty sort of countenance as she steps backwards into the wall and disappears through the wall. Rude. Rude. <laughs> oh, it is a manners demon. People don't do that usually. Um, would uh, old mate Hans recognise that to be um, all the hallmarks of a night hag? Yes. Can you all roll initiative for me? Night hag! That wasn't even German. My egg. What do you say? Initiative. Okay, so who was still outside? No. Just Curly? I don't think anyone was. Curly just came I... in. Yeah. Did you come in, Curly? Yep. Yeah. After after being invited. 17. 7. 22. Oh, nice. 10. 16 for Hans. Jack, you've got a plus two to your AC from the um, Shield of Faith I cast as well. Oh, cool. Did we get that as well? <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, but we, we've got the extra four uh, D4 to saving throws and attack rolls from uh, Giacomo's Bless. Attack rolls and saving throws, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, um, the form of the hag disappears back through the wall. Um, all you can see is her, uh, face sticking out and her popping bulgy eye, uh, as uh, she begins to fade back. Mo, uh, you get the first one. Um, great. I might actually get the barrel of goo and splash it on her face. Okay, so um, it's 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 a high barrel. It probably comes up to your waist, and, and it's quite full. Are you splashing uh, goo out of the barrel onto her face, or tipping the barrel? Um, I can tip the barrel uh, as and, and sort of like just try and shove it as much of it as I can towards her face. Yeah, awesome. And then rolling like, in it like a wine glass, sloshing. Yeah. To a like I'm gonna slosh her. Can I slosh her? I'm going to, like, fully slosh her. I'm going to do a roiling yeah, slosh. 
you just roiling prince slosh that uh, barrel right over you just ram into it um pushing it and it it rocks a little bit and then you slam into it a second time uh with your shoulder and the, Sorry, the range Ica... over shoulder. all right how rude is this then ag <laughs> uh, and the um the black sticky ica splashes out and just fills the room with that rancid stench it's it's really overpowering yeah. and the black ica yeah it's it's gag worthy and the black ica like laps at your feet um oh. and um it just splashes uh th- what seems like through her face and onto the wall so it doesn't seem to touch her face at all oh, is there anything I've else you wanted to do Mo? sticky and nasty um <laughs> All right, well, maybe I'll just punch her in the face and see if that does anything. <laughs> yeah, go for it, roll. <laughs> what am I rolling? Uh, just an attack roll. Why is there treacle around my ankles? Just roll a d20. 18? You strike straight and true right where a big bulging eye is, but your fist pass right through it and slams into the wall. You take one hit point of um, fist to fist to wall damage as you punch the wall really hard. What do I? What is it? What do I do? Uh, you take one point of damage. Okay, Curly. Um, <clears throat> Curly. Uh. Uh. S- sort of seeing that shit is going down, sort of ready, like lowers himself closer to the floor um, and emerges himself into the Ica on the floor and and starts kind of putting it all over himself. It's like a crab, like, <laughs> digs down into sand. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's gonna go well. Um, and uh, and and <laughs> does any does he feel anything? Does anything? Yeah, he he feels the the. Is it warm, Ika? Yeah, it's definitely warm. <laughs> yeah, oh. he, he's. You can see, like he was previously very cold. Felt the cold of a ghost. Um, upon his heart and and he starts slowly turning warmer um, you can all see uh, the warmth rising through his shell as he turns from blue to a deep ochre orange and um, and he goes oh that is so much better and he sidles over to the witch and says how do I hit you you have angered my friends, and I wish to hurt you. <laughs> and um, doesn't intimidate. Yeah. Intimidate. <laughs> go for go for the intimidate. Thirteen. Yep. Yep. She sounds intimidated. <laughs> Having a very good time. That is the laugh of a very intimidated lady who is covered in okay. goo. You are now covered in goo, Curly. Hans. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, so I am going to use my. Um, uh, in terms of, like, actions in turn, in terms of how much stuff you can do. Uh, can I recall any kind of weaknesses that maybe this uh, um, that a night hag would have, and then still be able to do so, like cast a spell, or would I just would that be my whole turn? You know that right now she's ethereal, and um, and that she's uh, naturally resistant to magic. It's natural oh. and normal attacks. Oh, cool. Do we run? So like she's everything. resistant to everything. <laughs> just run? Um, oh, so everybody, um, she uh, is uh, essentially, she does, we can't do shit to her. She can 
deflect all kinds of attacks and all kinds of magic. She's super, 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 uber bad. Are you suggesting we run? But the treasure, the treasure. Uh, Surely there's something we could do. What it's about probably the, in the nice cabinet. That's my guess. What about the girl, you idiots? Well, it's not in that barrel, is she? There's no remains of small humans. No. I mean, also, out of that the fa- oh, I mean, are you going to have this nightmare? It's going to end. It's going to end with her. All right, Hans, what are you doing? All right, um, we should go, and I'm going to cast uh, Hex, uh, which is bonus action on Old Mate, which uh, you place a curse on a creature that you can see within range. Until that spell ends, I do an extra 1d6 necrotic damage to it. Oh, that's a two. Missed. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, uh, in your terror, hurl the spell, but it, it flies uh, wide. Um, and as it does, uh, her face um, is submerged in the wall and it begins to come back out her form appearing back inside um, as you look up and you see the forms of two identical hags um, come down from the ceiling so they're ethereal as well but they're um, they're just floating in the air as they float face down through the the ceiling and down um, towards you mission impossible style um, and the, the three emerge and they land and stand uh, on the where the, the barrel has spilled out. They stand in a, a triangular formation and as they do, they, um, they, their image flickers and they become, well, they come back into the material uh, plane oh. of existence. Oh God, they're not about to do Macbeth, are they? I hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> We just fucked up their cauldron as well. They're going to be pissed off. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, in lightning, or in hold passion? Um, so <laughs> can... Uh, oh, God, it's the Waterdeep Amateur Dramatic Society all over again. Okay, can... I'm having flashbacks. Can I get wisdom saves from everyone, please? Shit. Lucky we get that D4. So, yeah, Jack. Roll an extra d4 to it. I'm gonna need it. 14 is the dc. Four. That's a 10 15. total for me. Oh, wait, no, wait. Yes. I gotta add something. I gotta add something. I got it. I add zero. It's 10. It's just a 1d20, right? Plus, yeah, plus, the plus your wisdom. Plus your wisdom modifier. Yeah. Two. Saving throw. It's two. Yes, saving throw. Okay. What saving throw? Uh, wisdom. What'd you get, Curly? Uh, twelve. Twelve. I got I got a one on the on the plus four. Okay, so Curly and Mo are held in place. You feel the magic bind you um, stuck in a single position. Um, uh, but uh, Ragyog and uh, Giacomo are able to fight off uh, the magical effects. Um, Hans. Uh, you, uh, having thrown the hex, have drawn uh, the attention of oh, cool. uh, the lead uh, hag. <laughs> um, and uh, she. Which number one it says in the script? I think. Which number one? Yeah. Uh, and she reaches out um, and with a Bit swirl of up. her hands um, <laughs> says, Here, fishy, fishy, fish. Uh, and uh, the magic coalesces around you and your body begins to crack and morph and move until you are turned into a large carp, which flops <laughs> on the ground. Uh, what? Who? Opening and closing its mouth, Hans, uh, gasping for air. Oh, a carp. Yeah, so fish. I thought you said I, a carp. Like, I didn't no, a carp. A, ma- a magic carp. <laughs> a magic carp? Yeah. Oh my God! Can I evolve into a Gyarados? <laughs> <laughs> so you flop <laughs> around uh, on oh, the yeah. ground. Um, no damage, though. No damage. Oh. Uh, Giacomo. Just wait. Am I in the Ica or on the floor? You're in the Ica on the floor. The Ica lays on top of the can floor. Can I breathe in the Ica? Giacomo 
draws a saucepan from his back. He looks towards the three witches. He says, Just one moment while I thank our sponsors. <laughs> DPR is brought to you by the good and generous folk at Patreon. If you want to join up and support Dice Paper Roll, head to patreon.com forward slash Dice Paper Roll. You can join at any level, get access to all sorts of extras, including our private Discord channel. Although, of course, the times are tough, and if you want to support DPR and you don't have much liquidity, well, get in touch, because you can join too. Everyone's welcome. Uh, also, if you'd like to share the podcast or write a review, that's also... Very handy. Uh, now, on with my action! Get on with it, then. <laughs> <laughs> and Giacomo casts... Uh, hang on, are they... Yeah, Giacomo casts command. Uh, Desist! Is his one word, command. At, a, at, the, at the lead, which the target must succeed a wisdom saving throw or follow the command on its next turn. The... Uh, Spell save DC is 14. It's a bit Tim Burton now. Uh, yeah. DC 14, you say? Yes. Uh, yep, so the hag uh, fails... Um, so there's a, there's a series of different commands you can make, right? Approach, drop, flee, grovel, halt. Um, so is that desist, is that flee or grovel or? I guess desist is probably closest to halt. Um, I mean, it depends yeah. how in much interpretation there is. In, I, I guess in, it, Yeah, halt is good. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the lead hag is held in place and unable to act for the next turn. Okay, now awesome. That, and anything? Yeah, uh, yeah. He he. Um, <sighs> he just breathes out. Kind of this little stretch. All right, next person, go. Uh, Ragyog. Oh boy, uh, Ragyog f- fires a scorching ray into the lead hag. All three rays. May Lathander's wrath burn you to the hells in which you came from, you foul and disgusting maker of horrible pies. Sick burn. Uh, Three rays of fire hurl them at targets within range. Uh, So, roll to hit, right? Mm -hmm, Please. Let's see if they get burnt. That is... Hang on, what's my fucking spell attack? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So tell me, Hag, pie just pie. as a as a side bit of uh, pie, pie, pie to pie person yes. uh, conversation, what do you charge for a, a, a Hag's pie? Gold piece for a dream oh, yeah, pasty. You said that. How do you how do you afford to give people dreams as well as pies? I find a gold piece and I can give them a premium uh, pie, but not dreams. People pay for us for a hallucinogenic. You would be amazed in Barovia. People need a break. Enough of your lies, foul hag. And I rolled a 21, a 9, and an 18. Two of those uh, connect with okay. the night Okay, so uh, it is 2d6 fire damage for each one. Ooh, 8 plus... Five, 13 points of damage. Okay. Um, so the, the lead hag is uh, is struck by the two. Uh, she's halted in place and then struck by the two uh, scorching rays and they catch on her clothing and she is engulfed um, in, in flame. It, it catches on her, her old dry polyester shawl and uh and and goes up in flame and um the the cheap uh polyester seems to drip away from um from her shawl and little bits of flame drip down onto the ground into the ichor um which immediately catches on fire uh, and the floor (laughs) is 
uh, engulfed Hans, in a woof of flame. Um, Hans flops up and down, and then the smell oh, of like a really nice oh, cooked six. fish Wait, just starts to emanate. Can I? <laughs> can Rag Yong? <laughs> does it? Do I still have time to run through the icker as it catches on fire and scoop carp hounds up and not? Uh, cop any attacks of opportunity from the night hags, and if they do, uh, I'll just whack them with Hans the fish. You you would cop a <laughs> you would cop one attack of opportunity. I've got to um, do it, and you need to give me a sleight of hand to or a, okay. a, a dexterity check to scoop up that right. uh, that fishy boy. <laughs> I'm so, wriggling, I'm quivering and roiling all over the place. I rolled man. a sixteen on the die, nineteen for my sleight of hand, mm, and my nice. armor class is seventeen. Um, yeah, you you scoop him up um, as the nearest hag uh, lashes out at you with a claw. Ooh, um, and <laughs> I just feel like it's bad news. Good news. Bad news. Good news. Bad, bad news. news. Good news. Very bad news. Very bad. Uh, Oh, and she lashes out with a claw, um, scratching uh, with these uh, curly, gnarled um, and dirty fingernails, slashes across your face, Rag Yog, four um, scratches. You take eight points of damage as oh, she slashes boy. into your your face. Ouch. Um, and the, you scoop him up as the fire engulfs um, the three hags standing behind you and the it, all the ica uh, lights up and and begins to catch on their clothing uh, and they begin to shriek okay quick go for the treasure and uh Clogheart so, goes for a look in the nice looking cabinet <laughs> where all the good china would be uh, fuck that right okay. um, who's who's in the ica at the moment uh who's in the ica we're all in yeah. the ica yeah. Uh, the hags mostly, but it's sort of moving around the floor towards you. So, Mo, it's your go. Oh, am I not paralyzed? No. Oh, yes. Sorry. Does she get yeah. another <laughs> save or anything? A wisdom saving throw. Yeah, give me another wisdom saving throw. 19. Yes, Ow! you do get a go. You break free of the hold uh, and you're able to act. Good. <laughs> it's how we graduated drama school too With a wisdom saving throw Then we were able to act <laughs> And that's exactly what we said Good <laughs> Super How helpful. much did that cost me? Good, Good. Sounds lucrative Good. Good. I don't use that a lot <laughs> I spent how much to be the colour red? Fuck. Oh. You are the color red right now. Okay. Yeah, well, so. curly technically is the color red. Right yeah. 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 Okay, Mo, what do you. I really don't know what to do. Um, I need to kill that last hag. Uh, yeah. I need to get. Killing the lead hag is probably a good. Get, getting good into news. getting some hag action happening. Uh, <laughs> that hag also has a, another enemy within five feet of it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, which means so, roguey, roguey uh, sneak attack. Means rogue, you get a sneak attack. Bow, bow. Yes, I will. If I you will with a stabby advantage on the attack, attack too. With the, with the stab, I draw one of bow, my little bow. daggers from inside my many layers of bow, fabric. Bow. It's a really cute little silver bow, dagger bow, with like a bow, pink bow. purpley handle, and then like a couple of oh, keychains yeah. hanging off the end. Bow. Like it's kind of got those fluffy balls and stuff. It just, I really like collecting bow, keychains. Bow. Okay, and this particular dagger is quite. You know, it's it's my happy lucky dagger. That's what I call it. All right, happy lucky, let's go to work. And I sneak attack up into the lead hag. Where's that? It's just your normal attack roll. It's just a normal attack yeah. roll. With the but you get advantage, so you roll two and take the higher. Two and take the higher. Well, the so first rolled. one's 24. That'll do. Um, so you strike in uh, with the dagger. So roll your damage. And I mean, you should roll the second one anyway, just in case you get a critical. Yeah. Roll the second one. I'm rolling yeah. it. Yeah. It's 12. <laughs> ah. bow, bow. That was what? I can damage. Bow. Oh. Damage is six. 
several at once? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Do I have to roll? Uh, then you roll two d six for sneak attack. Sorry. You roll an extra two d six for sneak attack damage as well. So you want your diet, your d4, I assume, for your dagger. Oh, and shit, then sorry, the sneak attack's a different fucking section. Hang it's, on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, two of them. Two, like, six-sided, yeah? yeah? Yeah, that's right. Nine? Yeah. Nice. So you um, you uh, move around the upturned barrel, uh, and as the hags turn to look at Ragyog snatching up um, Fishy Boy, you drive the dagger um, into her... Uh, her, um, just underneath her shoulder blade in her back, uh, and she shrieks. Um, All right, Ag. Again. No more shrieking for you. Well, stop stabbing me! <laughs> <laughs> you can dash on out of there too. Yeah, you can... Cunning action. Uh, curly. Um, do I do another wisdom saving throw? Yes, please. Oh, fuck, it's fro- Can you do my roll for me, Greg? Yeah, sure. It's a plus three. Uh, you got a six. So you are still frozen. <laughs> Don't give the DM your choice. <laughs> roll! Well, it's, it's weird because it just came up and I. It, it, like froze. I, and it, it froze and now it's saying I got a 10, but so either way, it's a froze. But you're still frozen. Yeah. It, it yeah. told you. It told you what the outcome was going to be. So it, you curly, you strain against the the bounds of the um, the spell that holds you. Is, but um, oh, I have a question. Would um, would step of the wind get me out of it if I spent a krill point? <laughs> and, no, you're no, you're held. Oh, yeah. um, okay. No, it's it's painfully that you just don't get to do anything. Yeah, uh, you zo- the camera zooms in on Curly's eyes as they twitch sort of back and forth and it goes across to his uh, to his claws which are just also kind of twitching and it's very clear that in his head he's doing a mighty battle. <laughs> <laughs> Even though his eyes are just roiling and quivering slightly. Yeah, that's right. Um, Hans, you remain a slippery fish um, and you have fishy thoughts, but still your own personality, which is nice. <laughs> nice to know. Um, but so I can't breathe, right? No, you are suffocating. Okay, cool. I should, I'm just going to quickly look up uh, what the rules are about <laughs> uh, holding your breath. And how long that lasts for. Yeah, I think so, you get uh, quite a while. Continue. I stroke you and look deep into your eyes and go, it'll be okay, my fishy friend. I go to give you mouth to mouth and I'm like, oh, no, you don't want air, you want liquid, liquid. Oh, God, where's the liquid? So you look into my big beady eye as it just, like, wildly moves around, like, <laughs> trying to look anywhere and just not into your mouth. Okay, so the lead hag is still uh, held in place from um, Giacomo's command, and the other two uh, sweep around. The one next to you, Ragyog, reaches forward and tries to uh, grapple the cod out of your, uh, uh, or the carp, I should say, grapple Hans out of your grip. No worries. Now, just quickly, I have a feature called Warding Flare. Now, when I am attacked by a creature within 30 feet that I can see, I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Given that they're coming into my space to grapple Hans, yep. can I apply that? Yeah, for sure. Great. So, um, I go, no, the Morning Lord wards you off. And a, a brilliant flash bursts out from my holy symbol and she gets disadvantage on the attack. Um, yeah, she claws at uh, to try and grab uh, Hansa Karp and um, <laughs> can't get a hold of of him um, and the flash blinds her as she reaches up to, to cover her eyes. Uh, the other hag um, is now on fire and steps around and raises her hands and as she does um 
watch this like a, a static electricity starts to gather in the room um, and seems to like spark from the other two witches nearby and then funnel around uh, her and wrap around her arms and build um, as she unleashes a lightning bolt. Can, um, can I get uh, Mo? Oh no, Mo! You're you've just attacked the front one. So can I get uh, Giacomo? Yeah, Giacomo and Curly. Can you make a dexterity save for me, please? Do I? Can I add the four to that? That's right. Yep. Nine for Giacomo. He's busy oh, yes. between betwixt and between going to to the nice cabinet to look for the treasure and attacking the witches again and kind of forward and back and forward and back and doesn't dodge um, the lightning. That's a fourteen. Um, uh, you sorry, you automatically fail have failed dexterity saving throws because you held. Uh, sorry, didn't sorry, hear Jack. that, Greg. Yeah. Sorry, you automatically fail dexterity checks um, because you're held, Jack. Sick. Um, That's just great. Like, <laughs> so happy about Why that. Why even brother making it? Yeah. Cruelty, Lauren. Yeah, cruelty. just just straight up cruelty, yeah. not absent-mindedness, just cruelty. Um, <laughs> so uh, the electricity uh, arcs forward um, from her hands uh, and crackles around the two of you, uh, dealing f- dealing fourteen points uh, of electricity damage. Oh, that um, stings. Racking your bodies as you fall to the ground. Oh, are you? Does that bring you to zero, Giacomo? How many points? Sorry, fourteen. Yep. Yeah. What? Shit. Hang on. The electric- so the electricity crackles around you as you drop to the ground. Ah! Okay. And he passes out from the pain. Giacomo, can you give me a death save, please? Yes. Do I get to add the d4 to that? Yes. Uh, no, okay. you just roll a 20. And Into three. High or low. That's a fail, so mark one down, one failure on your death saves. Um, Kelly's also... <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, Ragyog. Uh, but... Uh, but- I got a 13 on my death save. Is that a failure or a... No, that's, that's a pass. pass. Ragyog. Uh, okay, so Ragyog is going to cast... Uh, I'm going to heal. So I will cast Spare the Dying on... Um, uh, on Crabman, which is a... Oh, wait, that's an action. Fuck, sorry. My spells are just frozen on me. No. Why have they disappeared? All my spells have disappeared. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) The flames crackle in the base of the mill uh, and the the room is lit uh, by the firelight and the the crackling, uh, the uh, the crackling of the fire and the cackling (laughs) of the hags uh, fills your ears. Um, the, the discharge of electricity has added a, a, a smell of ozone uh, to the air as Ragyog uh, scrambles around uh, <laughs> looking for one of his spells in a panic uh, as, uh, as uh, Giacomo and Curly uh, lay dying on the ground. Curly's actually um, just frozen in his spot in sort of a kind of a rigor mortis happens to crabs i guess were you doing what i I think think you were doing greg yeah i think that's a really good point to uh end today's game yeah uh, today's episode so uh yeah i think that's a good one says the dm (laughs) that's a good one should not have gone into this building guys i I fucking told you (laughs) oh